I grew up listening to my mother telling me there's more than one way to skin a cat. Hi, Danielle here and welcome back to my channel it is such a pleasure to have you here with me today I look forward to seeing all of you on Wednesdays and on Fridays as new videos are released but listen do me a favor look down and see if you are subscribed to my channel and if you are not would you kindly do me a personal favor of subscribing it is my personal goal this year 2017 with all of the wonderful things that i have coming up to get to one thousand subscriptions and so i welcome you to help me along this journey if you are already subscribed you can also take part in this epic journey and do me a favor like my videos comment on my videos share my videos and also invite your personal close friends family extended family to my channel so that they too can be a part of this epic journey. Listen, today we are going to talk about having more than one way to do something. Like I said, I grew up with my mother singing this in my ear all the time. There's more than one way to skin a cat. Not because you did it one way before, that means you have to do it another way, the same way, another time and so today i just want to share with you some of my observations now that i have become a resident on youtube now prior to starting my own channel what i used to do i guess just like everybody else is mull around and look for things that i was interested in whether it be hair care or makeup or um what can I say, scriptures, you know, daily edification, things like that. Um, but now that I'm a resident and I'm actually spending more time in the community and interacting and looking to see really and truly what YouTube has to offer, I'm finding more and more things, things that I would have never thought would have been on YouTube. But for my what can I say, personal instance or for what we're going to rather talk about today is this. You guys know that part of the objective of my channel is to help women enjoy, be content in, and live a full single life until the Lord sends them their mate. And so one of the things that I do, even in my research in preparing some of my videos, is look to see what other content is out there so that I'm not duplicating things that have already been done, but I'm, I'm trying to find new and innovative ways to give similar messages. With that said, and I know, I know, I know, I know that there are all types of people on YouTube and I'm not knocking anyone. Believe me, this is not what I'm doing. But in my search to find or to look for material or to make sure that I'm not, I should say rather, stealing anybody's material, I have come across lots of channels, lots of I would say sisters, you know, females like us who have channels who promise that if you do such and such and so and so, they will guarantee that a man will fall in love with you. And just for example, some of these things, as benign as they may be, some of these things, you know, say his name, um, you know, make him miss you, make him jealous, dress to impress, find out where he hangs out and show up repeatedly. In other words, stalk the man. But when I listen to some of these ideas and some of these other videos that are out there, again, not knocking anyone, but just having an opinion and saying that some of these things actually sound like, I want to say coercion to me. Some of these things actually sound like manipulation. Now, mind you, there are women out there who have probably done some of these things and have been successful in getting a man to like them, to, to miss them, to fall in love with them. Um, but I said to some of those women, if you have been successful in using some of these tactics, 
then do you really know if the guy was truly interested in you in the first place? Or is it that, like I said, he merely succumbed? And so today, just briefly, I want to share with you three things, my sisters, those of us who are walking our single walk with Christ. I just want to share with you three quick things so that we're not falling into the trappings of the world, but we are walking with Christ and we're making sure that we're not following the world's example, but we are renewing our mind daily. Now, thing number one, and I've said this before in my other videos, and I'm going to say it again. You cannot compete with your vagina in a sea of vaginas. It's, it's just not going to happen. If we're all out there looking for a guy and each and every one of us have the same plumbing, then quite frankly, we just have to take that off the table because if you snag a guy with how low can you go or the tricks you can do, you know, with your body, trying to keep this you know, a, a, a friendly PG channel. If you were a guy like that or that way, was the guy really interested in you or was he simply just interested in your sex? And then when you run out of tricks, he's gone his merry way. So number one, take sex off the table. Number two, do not dress scantily. One of the things I remember when I was growing up is my grandmother telling me this, let there always be an air of mystery about you. Meaning you don't bear it all. You don't put it all out there. You don't show your cleavage. You don't walk around with your butt hanging out. You don't wear the shortest skirt that you can possibly fit your butt into all because you are trying to gain a man's attention. Now, yes, Man 101, men are visual creatures, but does that mean you put all of that on the table? Again, the word tells us beauty is fleeting and charm is deceptive, but it is the woman who fares the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. Let's not be that woman who, when you look at her, there's no mystery. When you look at her, you see everything her body has to offer. Thing number two, let's not do that. And finally, thing number three, which I have seen on other videos, you know, allow him to be your savior. If you're having problems, let him know what problems you're having. Ladies, don't do that. First and foremost, the only savior you should have is Jesus Christ. Period. Drop the mic, walk away. If you are trying to make a man your savior, then guess what? You have a God-filled hole in your heart that you first need to go to God and have filled. And quite frankly, you're just not ready for a relationship. But if you are approaching a man with problems that you may have financially or problems that you may be having with a sibling or problems that you may be having with your car or with your children. Yes, he is going to be interested. Yes, he is going to be very responsive to these issues that you are having because men are problem solvers. This is what God has put them on the earth. One of the things for them to do. But guess what? Again, you lure him in with your problems he helps to address or to fix your problems. And then if there are no more problems to fix, he walks away or maybe he sticks around and then you're left to wonder, hey, was this man truly interested in me? Or was he just lured by my problems and he just stuck around because there was nothing else for him to do or maybe nowhere else for him to go? I mean, yes, most women would like to be in a relationship that will eventually lead to marriage. But ladies, like I started out in my opening sequence, there is more than one way to skin a cat. And if you have been accustomed to doing any of these manipulative things, any of these things to get in the way of a man, to get his attention, to have him look at you, to have him 
be interested in you, to have him reach out to you. And I've been there. I've done these things. But guess what? What do we have to show for it? And not only that, like I said, and I've said, and I'm saying it again, you'll always end up with a question. Was he truly interested in me? Or did he just fall for my shenanigans? That's one way. Or you can try it God's way. Walk in your purity and contentment. Walk in your purity with expectation. Walk in your purity in service and see what the Lord will do. Now, this is the beginning video of a short series that I'm preparing for you. How to have a man fall in love with you. And I implore you, I ask you humbly, come back. These were just a quick list of things not to do. And as a matter of fact, if you have some of the things that you would like me to add to my list, be sure to drop them into the comment section below. Things that, hey, maybe you have done and they have not been fruitful or things that maybe you have done that have gotten you into a relationship, but unfortunately that relationship didn't last. Help me to help you or help our other sisters out there compile a list of things not to do so that they're not partnering themselves based on the world's example, but then that we can renew our mind, listen to what the Lord is telling us, and we can pattern ourselves off of his principles. Listen, be sure to tune back in. I look forward until the next time we speak so that we can continue this mini series. And until then, this is Danielle on the Red Couch, and I look forward to seeing you again.